Hey folks, Rick here from La La Farm. Let's cook some goat leg. Hey, morning folks. It is a Saturday morning. Uh, we recently had uh, two of our Kiko goats processed, our two culls for the year. Um, and one of them we had processed into ground um, goat, uh, ground, ground meat. Um, and sausage, uh, so the equivalent of hamburger and sausage. The other we had processed in two parts. Uh, one of those parts was this beautiful goat leg. That's what we are going to be cooking this weekend. So uh, it is Saturday. We're gonna put the rub on and just uh, put it into the refrigerator and let that rub do its magic for the next 24 hours. Uh, then we will put it in the oven and roast it uh, tomorrow It'll be in the oven for about eight hours. Uh, if you're not familiar with goat, goat is a very, very lean meat. There's not a lot of fat, not a lot of marbling in goat. With that said, it can be really, really tough if it's not prepared correctly. Um, and that's really what we're gonna focus on in this video is kind of giving you an example of how, how easily you can cook goat. It is a very, um, tasty meat. Um, some people think it's it's comparable to venison. Um, depending on the cut, um, I would say that that's true. Um, so let's get at this. So we're going to use a simple dry rub, wrap it up in aluminum foil, put it into the refrigerator for 24 hours, like I said, and then we will get to get this into the oven tomorrow morning. The dry rub is uh, four tablespoons of salt in this case i'm using sea salt i prefer sea salt over regular salt uh, this has this is nothing more than evaporated seawater it has uh, likely some trace minerals still in it whereas uh, salt mined salt um, generally is processed to remove any impurities such as trace minerals um, sugar you can use regular white sugar if you prefer in any kind of meat i generally will use brown sugar uh, it's got a little trace of molasses it just has a richer flavor in my opinion four tablespoons of garlic powder four tablespoons of onion powder it's a little bit chunky it's been in the pantry for a while this was the bottom of the bottom of the uh, of the jar so let's get this mixed up we'll get it applied and then um, get it wrapped up and into the refrigerator this was the onion jar from the remainder of the onion powder that I had. Realized today I normally will use um, the extra wide and long, the heavy duty Luna foil, and I'm out of that, so we're not using that today. Now overnight as this is wrapped up, this is going to the salt that's in this um, and the sugar is going to tend to pull some of the moisture out of this cut of meat. So having it wrapped up is really important because it's going to trap in that moisture into the cut. And that moisture is what is essentially going to braise this, roast this um, in the aluminum foil when we start cooking it tomorrow. So um, if we didn't have that, then we would lose a lot of that moisture. And that moisture is what's going to help tenderize. So this was a two-year-old dough that we had on the farm that uh, was just not a good mama. And we had to call her um, because that's if we if they don't have good maternal instincts then they can't stick around so this is a six pound goat leg um, if you had a smaller one say a nigerian dwarf this is a kiko buck or a kiko doe um, so she was a hundred and let's say 110 15 pounds uh, when we had her processed and let me say she was over 100 pounds when we had the process. I don't know the exact number that was in the previous processing video. A smaller Nigerian dwarf, you might have, this might be two or three pounds. Um, and in that case, you would obviously reduce some of these seasonings. And uh, 
So I'm making this in kind of like a boat. Whenever I do anything, cooking a slab of meat, I want to make like kind of a, a boat that keeps the, keeps the juices in the cut. There's our goat leg, ready to be roasted tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator, just let it set overnight, let that dry rub do its magic, um, pull some of that moisture out of the meat, and then as we cook it, that moisture is going back into the meat. But that's the effect of the salt and sugar. Um, it's to kind of, it's gonna dry it out, and then it's gonna mix with the juices, uh, with the, with the uh, dry rub, the juices will, and then as it's roasting or cooking tomorrow, it's going to basically soak back into the cut of meat and that's what's gonna help tenderize it. So stand by, we'll be back tomorrow. All right, it's day two on this uh, goat leg that we're doing. Let's get the oven preheated. We're preheating up to 450 degrees. Uh, I'm going to use the convection versus the standard oven. I like the convection oven function better. I think it circulates the air around whatever you're cooking. I think it personally turns out better uh, than a traditional oven. Let's get it preheated. The goat leg has been in the refrigerator uh, for about 24 hours, probably closer to 24 and a half hours. So let's pull that out. We're gonna let it sit out for probably 30, 40 minutes. Uh, let that temperature rise a little bit. Then we're gonna put it into the oven for 50 and immediately drop the temperature down to 300 degrees. Okay, the oven's up to 450 degrees. The reason I'm starting there is that once we put uh, the meat in, we're immediately gonna drop the temperature down to 300, but that initial hot temperature uh, will help to hopefully help to get a good sear uh, on the exterior of the meat. And then that 300 degrees, dropping it down to that temperature over the next six to eight hours, probably closer to eight, this is a six pound leg, um, will help get that uh, meat really, really tender, kind of pull off the bone with a fork tender. Uh, so let's get it in the oven. Uh, and then we'll be back uh, later once we pull this thing out. All right, the goat leg's been in right at eight hours. I'm gonna take it out of the oven and we're just gonna let it rest for about 30 minutes. Um, Rick and Chels and, and their family are on their way up. They're gonna be uh, joining us for dinner. So this will be good, I'm looking forward to this. All right, folks, it's been resting for about 30 minutes. Rick and Chels and, and all the grands just arrived, so we're gonna unveil this thing, take the foil off, get chopped up, have dinner. Join us. I'd say that's pretty tender. It's falling off. <laughs> it's peeling off. Oh, man. I just didn't tell her what we were having. That doesn't mean that she don't like it. She'll she'll so, like it. We had the um I left the beans. Oh, it's good, yeah. It's starting to get cold. Yeah. And I'm hoping that by leaving the gates open, if they do have babies in the rain and it starts to rain, that they'll have it inside instead of outside. That's why I locked the gates open. So I go out there and roast. Awesome! Look at these. I should have taken a picture while it was still in. Well, I'd say that's pretty tender. <laughs> there we go. One goat leg. All right, folks, we did our, we did our uh, goat leg, roasted that today, and had the whole family over for dinner. Which, uh, not mm -hmm. a whole family, but 
<laughs> the local whole family over for dinner, which always makes me happy. And uh, so we're going to give you a little bit of feedback, and then we're going to close this video down and have a private dinner. Some basic reviews for my for my for my meat. Yes. Bops. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it tastes like a pot roll, but better. That is really good. Very that good. That's more really good for the one who doesn't like meat. That is awesome. You like that, do you? Mm -hmm. All right. It's got really good flavor, and it's uh, the uh, the texture is perfect. So there you have it from Rick Isaac, the one who doesn't like meat, thinks it's pretty darn good. So on that note, we're going to sign off, finish our dinner, folks. Always remember, treat others as you would like to be treated. La La Farm, eating. <laughs>